So this is part two of 5.1. I'm going to go through an example of one and we will be doing a lot more, like I said, with um, the next three lessons until um, you've got this nailed for all sorts of different types of rational functions. So the first one we're going to look at here is the graph of x squared minus 4. So x squared minus 4, uh, it's a parabola shifted down four units. And what we need to find are these little circles here, which are the invariant points. And again, I remind you that an invariant point is just a point that when you take the reciprocal of it, you're still going to be in the same place. So for instance, 1 over 1 is still 1. So I want to know at what height, at what x value would the height of the function be plus or minus 1? And that's an easy calculation for you to do. You just set p at x equal to 1 and solve for x. So I would have 5 is equal to x squared and x is equal to, don't forget, plus or minus root 5. So that means that this point here is going to be the root of 5 and 1. And this one over here will be negative root 5 and 1. Same thing I'm going to do for when is it equal to negative 1. And I bring that over and you're going to see that it's going to be uh, plus or minus the square root of 3. So this would be, this point here would be the root of 3 and minus 1 and minus root of 3 and minus 1 over here. So when I go to sketch the reciprocal function now, I want first of all to move those zeros of the function, which are plus and minus 2 here, and I'm going to move those down. So I do a dotted line I'm going to write it right underneath it helps you to, to sketch the function better. So here's my x equals 2, x equals negative 2. Those are my now my vertical asymptotes. And I'm going to start with this point here. So this point here is negative 4. And 1 over negative 4 is negative 1 quarter. So that means this point here is going to be a point on my function, negative 1 quarter. Now I still have my invariant point, which is at the root of 3 and minus 1, and negative root of 3 and minus 1, so right across from it. And so this part of the function is going to go like this. So I'm keeping my invariant points, those little red circles, they're still here on the reciprocal function. And the other two points are also going to be on the function. And note that the these ones are on the inside of those asymptotes. So because I have, um, this is 2 here. This is the root of 5 and the root of 3. So the root of 5 is going to be out here. So let's put a little dot here and a little dot on the other side here. Those would be just the same points that I've transcribed down here. And... At this point, the function is increasing, so that means on this side it's going to be decreasing. And it's also going to approach the asymptote, the horizontal asymptote, y equals 0. Because as I, so we have y equals 0 here for our horizontal asymptote, because if you plug in any number here for x squared, the larger it gets, the more it's going to approach 0. Okay, so let's talk now about the... Um, the zeros and such for each of these functions. So we're going like from this column right over to this one here, okay? So the first thing I want to know is what are the zeros? So the zeros for this are x is equal to plus and minus 2. And the, um, the vertical asymptotes are x equals plus and minus 2. You actually shouldn't say x equals here. You just say the because if I say plus or minus t, you might think they're asymptotes. They're not. They're zeros. So I would say the zeros are, because when you say x equals, you're talking about the equation of a line. So zeros are plus and minus 2, and x equals plus and minus 2 for the vertical asymptotes. There's no asymptotes in this function here, but there is a horizontal asymptote. So let's write under this, this is vertical asymptote. Am I still in the graph? Yeah. And the horizontal asymptote, y equals 0 horizontal asymptote. Okay, the other thing we want to know way over here, we want to know where 
are p at x and q at x. Now these go together, right? Because if the function is greater than zero, the reciprocal is greater than zero, right? So if I have five and I take the reciprocal of it, it's still going to be greater than zero. So this function, p at x and q at x are greater than zero. So this goes for both of them. I'm just gonna write both above here. So I have x is an element of, where is it greater than zero? So from negative infinity unto this point, so negative infinity to minus two, and then I have to go over here, so two to infinity. And where is it less than zero? So that's um, less than zero is going to be between these two points. So x is an element of minus two to two. So that holds for both of these. No, it's the same thing here. Okay, increasing and decreasing intervals. So this function is increasing. So this is p at x, we're under p at x, is increasing for zero to infinity. So increasing x is an element of zero to infinity. And this one is increasing well, it's increasing from negative infinity to 2, and then it's increasing again from minus 2 to 0. So some teachers do this a little differently. I, I kind of like to say that it, it can't be increasing at the asymptote, but some teachers will just say it's increasing between, for x is an element of negative infinity, to minus two round bracket. Now, uh, sorry, I meant to say zero here. So sometimes you, your teacher might just say yeah, it's increasing for that entire interval, but I tend to, like my students, to say between minus infinity to minus two and minus two to zero because it's not either, it's neither increasing nor decreasing at x equals minus two because that's where there's an asymptote. So you can check with your teacher on um, how they would like you to um, explain that. Okay, decreasing intervals. Um, so we had increasing from here to here and decreasing on this one is going to be decreasing between negative infinity to zero. Negative infinity to zero. And this one is going to be decreasing from zero to infinity. So notice the increasing became the decreasing interval of the reciprocal, the decreasing interval became the increasing interval for the reciprocal. And that's just the way it goes, right? We've already learned that. Okay, so the point where y is equal to one, those are the invariant points. We calculated them up above. So in this one it was um, y is equal to one at root five and one and minus root 5 and 1, and it was equal to negative 1 at root 3, minus 1, and negative root 3 and minus 1. Okay, so that works for both of them, right? P at x and q at x. And finally, the domain in the range. The domain for this function, domain, x is an element of real numbers, right? Well, we're not going to say x, we're going to say g at x, or p at x here. p at x is an element of real numbers. No question there. And what is the range for this function? Well, p at x um, is an element of real numbers such that, now we do have a restriction because the range starts at minus 4. So p at x is greater than or equal to negative 4. And that covers that domain and range. And the domain and range for a reciprocal function, so the domain here is going to be, well, let's take a look. What do we have for our domain? So domain is um, q at x is an element of real numbers. q at x is not equal to plus or minus 2, right? That's your domain. You have no values here, but values everywhere else. And the range is going to be q at x. Now we have a couple of things here to look at. 
we have q at x is greater than 0. So greater than 0 and less than, this was 1 quarter, remember this point here. So I'm going to put it under here. I'm running out of pen. So q at x is less than or equal to minus 1 quarter and q at x is an element of real numbers. Okay, so hopefully that helped you out to do. This was the exercise that was in 5.1. And remember, I remind you again to go to the PB Wiki site to get the handouts that I will cover one by one to cover, make sure that you can graph any type of rational function. And there are um, three different types that we will be looking at. Bye for now.